Hey guys, so in this video we are going to see how we can create REST API in Django using the Django REST framework. So we will be starting right from the installation of our Django project and then we will be installing the Django REST framework and we will be creating the REST API using that Django REST framework. So we will also test it through Postman as well as the interface which Django REST framework provides. So let's get started with it. So here is my folder where I'm going to create my project. So I'll open my git bash over here. So you can open your CMD as well. So the command prompt. And for those who are not so familiar with Django, you can just follow this blog. I'll just give the link in description. So how you can create your project and how to create an application. You will get all the commands and the step by step tutorial over here. So the command to create your project is Django admin start project and your project name. So let us just type that out Django admin start project and we will be making a student uh, crud okay so student data we will be inserting fetching updating and deleting it through the rest api so i'm just going to say student and hit enter over here and let us check in our folder if it's been created over here where's the bash so it just created over here student and you can see it has been created over here so now we'll just change the directory cd student and then we will run the server so i'll just open the student and say open with code and i will just run my server over here say py manage dot py run server hit enter so we'll let this server start over here until then we'll just get back to the visual studio I'll just close this over here. So we are going to use this dbsqlite 3. So if you want to use MySQL database with the XAM server or WAMP server, check out the video. The link is given in the description if you want to connect your Django project to your MySQL database. So here you just type your address localhost 8000 that will be mentioned over here uh, in your bash. So it's still loading. So once it's uh, the server has started you will be having that over here localhost colon 8000 so i'll just type it over here manually i have saved over here so you can see the install works successfully so our django project is created over here so we'll get back to the code and here uh, you can just create your custom folder over here for the api to handle all that so i will just create an app over here django admin start app api hit enter and you will notice your app being created over here so it is created over here and in your settings.py file just add this api in your uh, installed apps list so you can see you have your installed apps list over here right so just add the api over there so the app name which you just created Say API so here uh, we need to create a urls.py file in our API to handle all the requests so I'll just create a new file over here say urls.py and in this main urls.py file we need to add that over here so just add another path over here say path and just close the terminal and zoom in so here we are going to say anything starting with api slash has to be directed to the api.urls file so we are going to use an include function over here so first we need to import it so from django.urls import path comma include so that function we are going to use it over here include and within single quotes specify our app name so that is api and the file name urls so here we are going to say api dot urls so now we have created this uh, app and we have included the urls.py file in this main urls file so now let us install the django rest framework in our django project so just open up your terminal 
and we have to run few installs over here so just go to google chrome and search for django rest framework you'll get this first website over here just click on it and here is the official website of django rest framework but you have all the documentation you can see django rest framework is a powerful and flexible toolkit for building web apis and all other things so here you have an installation pip install django rest framework just copy that and go back to your vs code and paste that command over here press enter so i'll give it some time to install and it is installed so if you install it for the first time you will get few installs over here so i have already installed it so this is just a warning for my pip version is outdated so next what we have to do is we have to include this in our settings.py file so in your settings file let me just close my terminal and here in the installed apps you have to include it so that thing you will get it from the documentation itself so here you can see add the rest framework to your installed app setting so here just copy this and paste it over here we'll close the setting file and the urls file in your api so let us just import the path over here say from django dot urls import path and then we are going to say url patterns just copy it from this urls copy and paste they'll just remove this admin so the index url and here we have the views file right so just say views dot index and name this url as home or you can just keep it as slash so you just import the views file over here so from dot import views so from the current directory import views so this views.py file we have imported over here and let us create this function in the views.py file so just say function index pass the request and here you just say return json response say testing json so we are not going to send the json response over here so first we'll just test this i'll just show you with this thing and then we will be using the response which the rest framework provides so just go to your browser and here just say slash api hit enter and we have to set this safe parameter to false comma safe equals false so we'll go refresh and here it is so you can see we have got this json uh, whatever we had sent the json response over there that thing is coming over here so now we are not going to use the json instead we are going to use the response which the django rest framework provides so we'll just import it from rest framework dot response import response so that's going to be a capital r over there so we'll just change this json response to this response just copy that and paste and just remove all these things and here we will be sending our object we will serialize that object and we will be returning it back as a response so first we'll create our models so the student model over here a class student models dot model and add a colon over here so we'll add the field over here so i'll have the name of the student name is going to be a character field max length will keep it to 100 and null equal to false capital f yes then just copy and paste name and then we'll have the email and then we'll have the phone yes 
So if you want, you can just add some more extra fields. So we are just uh, demonstrating the API. So this much is enough for us. So we'll just add the string function over here. So if you wait in your admin dashboard, you'll be able to view the name if you are passing the name from here. Else we will get it like student object one, student object two. So we'll just return the self dot name. Okay, so now we will just migrate this table to our database. Say py manage.py make migrations. Hit enter. And your migrations will be created over here. So you can check it in this folder or here you have your migrations. And here it is. So now let us migrate this to our database. And just, yeah, py manage.py migrate hit enter and yeah so it has been migrated so we have to register it in the admin.py file so here it is yeah say admin.site dot register say student we need to import that just copy and say from dot models import student and say manage dot py create super user And I'm just going to leave it blank to use the default. So I'll just give the email address over here. And the password. The password will not be visible when you're typing. So you just type your password and hit enter. So I'll just overwrite it. Yes. So the super user has been created. So I'll go to the admin dashboard over here and say admin. the dashboard just admin yes so here we'll just log in with my details and here you can see your students table right so just open that and add few data over here so we will first fetch that using the Django REST API and then we will insert it using the APIs so for fetching it first we'll just add it from the admin dashboard so I'll just say Sharma email SHARMA okay and say save and add another say say save so here are the two data which I have added. So now let me just log out and go back to my API. Okay, so we haven't uh, set that properly. Just close the models and here. Yeah, so we haven't set it properly, right? So we'll fetch the student data over here first. So let me just say a variable called student equal to call your student model over here. Student model. Yeah, so make sure it is imported over here from models import student student dot objects dot all so we normally pass this data in our function right when we use django in this django rest api we have to serialize the data and then pass it in the response so for that we'll just create a serializers file over here just right click and say new file i'm going to name it as serializers dot py and here we're just going to import from rest framework import serializers yeah and then you have to just import your model so that was from within the same directory the models file dot models import student so we're just going to create a class and you could name it with the model name and following with the serializer so we'll just say 
student serializer and just say serializers dot model serializer so that's going to be a capital M over here here it is and then we are going to specify the other details that is the model name so the model name is going to be student and the field so we are going to take all the fields so i just say all and we'll just close the serializers now and here we will import that serializer which we just created so we have the student serializer i'll just copy that and say from dot serializers import student serializer okay so here we are going to say serial students so i'll just create a variable called serial students so that is the serialized data and here we are going to call our student serializer student serializer and pass the student data which we have just fetched above this so student and we have many data over there right so you can say many equal to true so that's going to be a capital t okay so now in the response we are just going to pass this serialized data over here and say dot data okay so now let us just check it in our output let's hit enter over here okay so i just figured out that we have missed with the decorator so we had to add the api view upon the function name so we'll just add that over here so first we need to import it so it's along with this yeah so from django rest framework dot decorators port api view yeah so this one we are just going to add it on top of this function say add api view function and within that just pass in all the methods you want to access this with so we are going to say get method so this is just going to be a get methods we are not posting any data over here so just go back to the browser and refresh and yes so this is the list of students we have over here so now we are going to view each student individually with the id okay so go back and go to your urls.py file just close the sidebar say path and here specify student view slash the id so just pass the pk over here so that's just the primary key and here we are going to say views dot student view and you're going to name the route name is student view so just copy this function name and go to your views file and just create a function over here say function student view and pass the request and the pk so the one which we just passed it from the url so that's the primary key here we are going to filter our student data with the id so just say student equals student model dot objects dot get where id is equal to the pk okay so the primary key and then we are going to serialize the student data just say serialize student or however you can just rename that variable so i'm going to say serial students student yeah so this is a single data so i'll just keep it as student and here you can just change it to students so it makes more sense that way and here we are going to pass it to the student serializer student serializer and pass that student and here many equal to false because we are sending only one student data then we are going to say return response so this is not a json response guys we are returning the 
response of this rest framework here just copy this and paste serial student dot data and just add the api view to this api underscore view and the method is going to be get so we are not going to post any data in this we are just fetching the data so i'll just copy the url student view slash the id so here we'll just paste student view slash two and here you can see id number two and the student details let me say one over here and hit enter so you can see we have got this id number one over here so now let us insert the data with this api so let's go back to the file over here so I'll just copy and paste this student add remove these things I'm not passing any id let's keep it more clear add student and here just add a comma over here and say student add and the same over here student add copy this function name go to your use file and here create a function student add and just pass the request and here we'll add the api view api underscore view function and the method is going to be post so here we are going to take the request data through the serializer so i'll just say serial data is equal to call your student serializer student serializer and here say data is equal to request dot data so in the normal django we just take request dot post so this has few more advantages over it so you can just get all the information from the Django rest frameworks documentation so here we are going to check so as we use the forms right if it is valid and then we are just going to save it so that similar way we are going to use it if serial data dot is valid then serial data dot save function yeah and then we are going to return a response over here return response and say serial data dot data okay so let us test this go copy the url from here add student we'll go back to the browser and change this add student hit enter and we'll just copy that first so it will be easy so we don't have to type it say add student so we have it over here itself so we will also be testing this through the postman so here i'll just change it testing say test at gmail and the phone we'll just put something at seven and let me click on post so here you can see the id we had not changed we had given it once so it's irrespective of that it will just create its own next record over here and the other details whatever we had given is been created over here so now let us just go and fetch all the student data over here and check so you can see we have three objects over here now so we have three students over here in our student list so we have seen how to fetch it how to create it and how to get the single student view so now let us see how to update the data over here so we'll go and create another path over here and let's change that to update student add the student id over here str of pk and we are missing a comma over here just change the function name to student update and also the url name so the path name student update copy this function name and go to your views file and here we will be creating a function a function student update pass the request and the pk 
I add API view function and within square brackets just say this is going to be a post method right and then inside this function we are going to filter the student from the total student list with the primary key so I'll just say student equals student dot objects dot get where id is equal to pk and then we are going to serialize it let's say serial student is equal to student serializer and here we are going to pass the instance say instance is equal to the variable name so that is student so which is just created over here so that it doesn't create a new record over here and the data is going to be request dot data okay and then what we are going to do is we are going to check if the serial student dot is valid then serial student dot save and then we are just going to return that return response serial student dot data okay so let us test this now copy that and go to your browser and paste it over here update student slash 3 okay so just copy that data just copy and then we'll go to that URL paste over here so instead of testing I'll just put it as fund of web it I'll just copy and paste that over here and this from 7 I'll just change it to 8 yes so now let me just say post and you can see the ID has not changed so we did not create any new ID instead that data has been updated over here so we'll go back and check so you can see that thing has been updated properly so you can also check that with the student view yeah student view of three yeah so the individual view you can see it has been updated over here so now let us see how to delete a student so we'll go to the code and create a new path over here add a comma over here say delete student and the id over here and just change the function name to student delete and over here also just say delete yeah copy the function name go to your views file and here you're going to say function student delete you get the request and the pk and here you don't have to serialize your data just to delete the student so just create that student student dot object dot get where id is equal to pk and then just say student dot delete so once the student is deleted we will return the response of all the available list of the students so that thing i will just take it from here copy that and paste and add the api view to this function say at api view function and say delete method so just copy this url delete student copy that and go to your browser refresh and here we have three records right so we'll delete this third one or let's delete this second record yes let's say delete student slash two hit enter and here you have student delete so get method not so you can see this delete button over here right so when you click this you can see you have got an alert over here are you sure you want to delete this student delete so just say delete and then it has been deleted and the other two things have been returned as a response over here 
we have only two students left over here so now we will just test this with the postman so i just copy this url and open my postman over here so i have created a workspace with the name django rest just close this sidebar and create a new tab and here i'm just going to paste this with a get method and say send so here you can see we have got the student list over here so next we had the student view so we'll just copy this and go to your postman and we'll just say duplicate tab and i will just paste it over here slash student view slash two so we have deleted that second record right so i'll just say three click on get method yes send and then you can see we have got that let's say one say send okay so student view is fine and let's add the student so just copy this and paste it over here and change the ending point over here that is add student copy that and paste and this is going to be a post method and here in your body and here you have raw so you can just copy that from here and paste it over there just copy and paste so id it is not going to matter over here so you can just leave it like that let me say postman copy that and say postman at gmail.com and phone number i'll just remove this and add one one and now let us say add student so in our response you can see unsupported media type so we need to add the header over here let's say content type here say application slash json not this one yeah and then just say post and here you can see the id number five has been created so the id number four i had just created and that has been deleted over there so it has created with id number five so in this method you can see we have all the student list here right send and here you have one three and five so you can just add one more and check so it will just continue from five so the third and so the second and fourth has been deleted so let us just change that what is it here postman new new and here I'll just make it to three three and let's say add student so you can see id number six and just send the get request again and you will get it over here so we have got it over here so next we had the update student right copy that and paste so it's just going to be similar i'll just quickly finish it Instead of add student, just say update student slash six. And the inside body, you just copy that from here. Here you have it, right? I'll just copy it and paste. So I had just given it as postman new, right? So I'll say postman test postman and even the mail i'll just change it to test postman so we are updating this right this should get updated let us just send and there is some issue over here okay so i think the headers say it all the preview okay so it's just because of the slash so i'll just add it over here slash and say send 
so you can see we have got that updated over here test postman test postman at gmail.com so we have done so only the delete student is remaining so just do that quickly and here is our postman just change this to delete student 6 and here i'm going to select the delete method and click on send so it has deleted over here so you can see only the id number 5 is the last student so that's it in this video guys we have seen how to create the rest api using the django rest framework so thank you for watching this video guys please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you